Thank you all. So I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. And what I'd like to talk about is this idea of um, working groups. So the ISC, um, and I should have written it out, stands for the Infrastructure Steering Committee, is the technical arm of the R Consortium. So it, it's, um, it's the place where we decide which technical projects to lead, uh, uh, to fund, and also which working groups to, um, uh, to cultivate. It's, uh, it's thriving right now under the leadership of, of Hadley Wickham. And the idea is that um, the consortium's members um, get together on the ISC and um, this is the wrong um, presentation, <laughs> but I'll do my best. So the idea is what we want to do is um, foster collaboration among uh, not only individuals but companies. So <laughs> the idea of a working group actually was um, an emergent property. It's not something that uh, existed in the early foundation of the, you know, the concepts that started the R Consortium. But what are, what are working groups? They're, um, they're projects informally for exploring new technologies. Uh, they're an impartial place. Uh, so we, we um, at the consortium, are, are not favoring any particular solution or any particular group. The, um, they can have funding or they can be um, at an exploratory level where, where it's not necessary. And the benefits are among the benefits of the consortium that they're sponsored by, this, uh, their, by the consortium in a way that, that makes the work open and available and transparent to the community. Um, it's open to all members of the community. You do not have to be working for a company um, that, um, that, that is a member of the consortium in order to participate in a working group. So this, if you go to the um, um, Our Consortium Works uh, website, is a list of all of the projects that at one time or another made the um, uh, critical mass to become a working group. Some of these are very active and others uh, have, uh, are dormant. And what I want to do right now is talk a little bit about uh, the work that's being done in the active working groups. Perhaps the most dynamic one right now is the, the, our Validation Hub project. So this group, um, is working to try to establish R on a fundamental level within the pharmaceutical community. And you can see here, its mission statement is quite impressive, to, um, to make a cross-industry initiative uh, to enable the use of R by biopharmaceutical companies in a regulatory setting uh, where the output may be used for submissions. And right now, the project you see on the bottom part has some specific goals to validate our packages, uh, create a platform for sharing tests, um, and make available the relevant QA information, and, and it's going to be free to use. So when you think about this, it's a major effort that, um, that came from a groundswell within the pharmaceutical community itself, data scientists working in these kinds of um, organizations you see here at the bottom, uh, the, the Ames um, SIG within the uh, PSI project, the European Federation in, of Statistics, to uh, they recognized that they had a problem and that they needed a intercompany way to solve it from the um, partial membership list here, you see it's quite, um, it's populated by quite a number of different companies and it includes the participation of the FDA. So this is really exciting that um, we're able to, to have not only companies who normally 
compete with each other, find a home where they can collaborate for the common good, but we can also involve the regulatory agencies itself. What you have here is work in progress. So the committee is trying to come up with a, a way to validate packages. So what does that mean for a, um, um, for a pharmaceutical package. A valid validation obviously has many interpretations, so what they want to do is come up with a, a, tight, a tight definition of what it means uh, in, in their regulatory environment, and also develop practical tools that may, may result in a, a server somewhere uh, that could be replicated uh, within a company if it's necessary. So you imagine, there's a free server with validated packages and software and QA tools, and it could be replicated within a particular company. So you see here like a workflow, what does it mean? And uh, you can see the kind of things that, the, that this group is struggling with. How do you jumpstart um, the effort? Do you have to validate everything from the beginning? What do you consider in terms of risk? Can a SaaS, um, package be automatically grandfathered in? Is the tidyverse, has the tidyverse had enough um, checking and use that it can be considered a safe package? All of these are very deep technical issues that the group is working on. Another group that's uh, very active is the uh, diversity inclusion working group. And, and this is, um, I think, extraordinary because early on, the, the consortium recognized that infrastructure also had a social and, and human component to it. So the diversity working group is short term. Um, they're nearly finished developing a, um, a code of conduct. They're working on uh, best practices and ideas for um, for finding and recruiting speakers, for diverse speakers. Uh, we're working to, to publicize and give a voice to, to um, users uh, throughout the world. We have uh, members have come from all different countries and, con and continents and cultures. And long term, the idea is to try to work this idea of a diversity through the very fabric of how the consortium works itself. The Census Working Group is another collaboration between government and our users. So what you have is the Census Department has actually built um, courses for using census data with R. So they're very um, active in trying to promote the use of R to uh, access census data, and they're trying to make it easy for users to approach there. So you can see here are some of the people that are working, again, with participation from the government agency to make this happen. Um, here's a, a kind of an unusual working group, but what these, these people are trying to do, uh, led by John Nash um, and others, is to preserve some of the algorithms um, that are deeply embedded in R, uh, particularly Fortran code, to make sure that these algorithms are in a shape that can be transmitted into the future and that there is a, a cadre of hopefully younger people who have the ability to, um, to work and understand these algorithms. You know, after all, we have 20 years of R code. The Fortran code that, that's underneath is, um, much of it is is tried and true and tested and fantastically um, accurate. And we want to make sure that there's a historical continuity there. So this working group is a, you know, a work of passion. And they're, they're, they're making progress. There is some visible um, um, work product here. So you can see uh, some of the talks that are, that are online. And there are videos and slides. So I encourage you to, to check up on that. The code coverage tool um, is, is a working group that is um, still sitting, uh, but did a lot of work in the 2017 timeframe in order to, to bring the 
cover our package up to date and to make sure that it's a, um, a you know, kind of like living um, effort to keep it relevant and, and see what can be done to move these kinds of concepts forward and it within CRAN. Arn Pharma is, um, is a conference now in its second year. Um, again, a grassroots effort developed by the pharmaceutical industry. And it's, um, it was the um, initiative for bringing forth the R Validation Hub package. So it's a virtual cycle here. So a group of um, um, people who wanted to have a conference in order to kind of share ideas, data scientists at pharmaceutical companies, again, very competitive, but wanted to talk with their peers, created a conference. It went so well that the conference um, generated the Validation Hub project, which is a, a particular technical offshoot. And I believe it was very important, um, the, the, it was proof of concept that led uh, Genentech to join the R, the R consortium this year. Similarly, we have a, an, a conference, again in its second year, organized as a grassroots project as an R consortium working group. Um, to cultivate the use of R among clinicians in, in, uh, in medicine and um, related healthcare fields. So it's not clear how this is going to take off, but it's, um, it's really exciting to see the um, energy from practicing doctors trying to you know, learn enough R in order to bring evidence-based medicine into their, their individual practices. So how, um, how can you start a working group? Well, the idea is to, um, to pick a project with wide scope, uh, to think big, um, something that would benefit the com uh, the, our community at large, uh, and to assemble a team. Uh, practically, you need at least a, a leader and two or three people, and to think about the finances. So if it's the kind of exploratory project um, that really needs just um, upfront work or perhaps faces difficult problems of gaining consensus, maybe you can do that with minimal financing. So the path to that is quite straightforward. Just write to the ISC and ask for working group status. And what we'll do is provide you some administrative structure, a uh, GitHub page and a place to, um, to show your work. Uh, we're, we're all about operating in public and being as transparent as possible. If you need funding, well, then the right way to do it is to write a formal proposal and to, um, uh, to participate in one of the funding cycles that are right now twice yearly. So that's, that's basically it. What I want to encourage you to do is think about the R Consortium if you're starting a project that for collaboration, and again, it can, can be collaboration among individuals interested in a particular topic. For instance, you could be interested in ecology, you could be interested in, um, in a project for finance, but it's also a mechanism for companies to collaborate. So it's very, it's a bit more difficult uh, for individuals to start this kind of, you know, intercompany-wide collaboration effort on their own, and we are here to try to make that happen. So thank you. Thanks, Joe. Do we have any questions? Yes. Hi, to propose a new working group, do we need to already have a team or we can do it uh, as an individual or, so, and, and look for possible collaborators? Right, so the idea is um, we can help you find collaborators. So yes, if you're an individual and you wanna put in, you know, you're sure you can put in the startup effort 
and talk to us, we will help you find collaborators. Uh, what is the number of submission of a working group and the number of accepted working group per year? Could you please repeat your question? How many submissions of projects uh, are consumption received every year and how many of them are, are accepted? Oh, well, let's see. So twice a year, it varies, but we may get... Um, in any particular cycle, something like 20, 25 projects. Uh, we accept as many as we can, and it depend, the acceptance rate depends on the merit of the project itself, uh, how it's structured uh, in terms of the, the need for financing, and of course the amount of money that we have available, so we have to prioritize. Not all of those projects are working groups, some of them are, and um, there's a good chance if it's a collaborative project, it would, you know, rise to the top. Uh, thank you. Uh, how do you measure the success of uh, these, these groups and uh, in order to continue financing them? Do you, do you have any sort of, do you measure their success? Yes. Um, well, first of all, if it's a working group that does not demand funding, where where we can be very lenient there. So uh, as long as there appears to be movement and activity, we're, we'll encourage people uh, as long as they have an interest. Um, anything that demands funding is scrutinized for whether or not they meet milestones. And, um, uh, you know, but the measure of success is, is not externally imposed by the consortium. It's, it's an internal measure. So if you start a working group and it's an exploratory project, um, in fact, we've, we've done at least one like that where we've given some funding in order to write some code and hire a, a student to investigate things and they decided that it wasn't feasible to pursue, that's still a successful project because it was something where people from many different backgrounds came together and, and made a group consensus. This R validation hub, I, I have every expectation that it'll result in tangible product that will be of great benefit to the pharmaceutical industry. Hi, thank you for your presentation. I have a question. I would like to know if there are possibility to kind of help for project developed for early career science? Or do you need to be part of a big team with big buzz? Imagine if there are some students that just finished and have so many ideas, or there are other kind of help for them? Well, um, it's possible, but that kind of thing needs leadership and commitment. So. With the consortium, um, you know, we have a limited number of people who are actually participating in the ISC, and, and the best projects uh, or the most likely to succeed projects are those that have enough level of enthusiasm and commitment um, that we can assign an ISC sponsor to, that somebody will light up and say, yeah, I want to help make this successful. So if you can bring the energy to something like that, which seems to me to be difficult when working with, um, with early stage people, uh, you know, we'll try to help you as, as best we can. 